And now, coming to you live. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody, let's sing along. Hi there. My name is Roland Sandberg, and I tune in all the way here in Finland, Europe. Lots of greetings from Finland. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Talking Tunes. I'm your announcer, Kitty Litter. Now it's time to talk to the loon tunes of Talking Tunes. Here they are, the Talking Tunes crew. 91X, FAMA, Baja California, Mexico. Welcome to Talking Tunes 2020. Time now for Talkin' Tunes on 100.9 FM. Talkin' Tunes, a weekly roundtable discussion on music, radio, entertainment, television, nothing too serious, just light and lively chatter with your host, Oscar Osbo. Nudist camps often, <laughs> uh, often advertise that they offer the three R's. Now, two of the three R's are rest and relaxation. What is the third R of the nudist camps? Uh, ready, wet. <laughs> Why is, it, why is it so shelf? Yeah. Why, 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 why will it last for like so long? They're like Twinkies. They just in the process. It's, it's, <laughs> the, it's the cooking process, the sterilizing process, which I indicated takes, takes about four and a half hours. Uh, that provides that indefinite shelf life to it. Uh, we've had a can that came back from a homemaker here several years ago. Uh, she professed to have it in her pantry for 19 years <laughs> and wanted to know <laughs> if, it was still, it. if it was still edible. Uh-huh. So we took it over to our research and development people, and they opened the can and prepared it and, and found it to be perfectly wholesome. So Do they eat it, though, or they just they, it first? They enjoyed it like we do every Friday here when really? we have a, when we have oh, a taste cutting. You do? What, really? what do you do? Do you have a whole bunch of different recipes laid out? Well, what we really do is we just take uh, representative cans uh, mm-hmm. off the production line and just make sure that uh, all the attributes are there, the consistency mm-hmm. and the flavor <laughs> and the texture and so forth. Kind of like fine wine. 19-year-old spam. <laughs> Ooh. That's like Wine a good bottle of champagne, isn't it? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Spam tasting? Mmm, I don't know. And we went out to one of these all-night hamburger joints. You've seen these all-night hamburger joints? They got the, you know, the hillbilly waitress out there with a the dirty hair hanging down the ringlets, you know, and dirty, greasy apron on, and, you know, and she's sucking on a cigarette, you know, and standing there and she's scratching herself, you know, and... And I said to her, real polite, like I said, hemorrhoids is just what's on the menu, smart guy. Don't order nothing special. What the hell? <laughs> and then Louie, he ordered two hamburgers, you know. And he'd make them up in little balls, you know. So she gets the two hamburgers out of the refrigerator and takes one hamburger and puts it under her armpit and goes, whack. <laughs> takes the other hamburger and puts it under her armpit and goes, whack. I said, what the hell are you doing? She said, I'm making the hamburgers. I says, forget my hot dog. <laughs> I don't care who you are, and I'm not talking against the younger generation who is very sharp nowadays. You don't bug kids anymore, you know. Do they read great books? Do they see great movies? No. When we were kids, we read stories like Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, Peter Pan and Captain Hook. Remember that dirty Captain Hook and Peter Pan? Remember how he died, wiped himself with the wrong hand? See, he had a claw, sir. I mean, an iron claw in his hand. You know, God, it's mighty. Well, I'm going to have to get on the blackboard and give you chalk talks. But anyhow, that's our bartender. He's a Greek. That's a guy. He comes from the northern part of Greece, Poland. What is this? You can't get no farther north than that, boy. <laughs> when they say, no, he's a good bartender. I mean, I'm not knocking bartenders. Bartenders go, you know. And uh, he never says anything. He never says He's quiet. Every night we walk, I would say, good night, Sam. He never says a word. We say, good night, Sam. He never says a word. The other night he walked out, and the boss said, good night, Sam. He didn't say anything. The boss hit him right in the mouth, and $22 worth of quarters fell out. <laughs> Everybody in the whole room will drink, right? Up in the bedroom, I heard a scream. Who put the Tabasco sauce and the Vaseline? <laughs> now, aren't you glad you're sitting in front? Oh, we're going to be friends. But anyhow... <laughs> You and I, the war's over, you can get parts of your head. Huh? And there's the playhouse, not the Playboy. I bought my key to the Playboy, you know, and I said to the guy, you know, for $25, do I get, you know, one of the bunnies, you know? He said, oh, the bunny will serve you your drinks. I said, no, you don't seem to understand for 25 bucks, buddy. I mean, can I get a bunny, you know, and do a little, uh... He said, well, I'll just serve you your food and play billiards with you. I said, you don't seem to get a message, buddy. For 25 bucks, do I get it? He said, no, you got that when you bought the key. <laughs> Oh, I'll have one more toast, and then we'll put our drinks down. Oh, we were drinking the tailor's daughter, and the only thing you ever made that fit me. <laughs> we don't really have topless go-go girls here. Not like they have in California. 
out, they're, they're naked. There's no question about it. From the waist up, they are naked. And I saw them, and don't think that's a hell of a shock, boy. Muddy boy, you better believe when you sit down at the table, you know, and you turn around, there's these flunger dungers right in your eyeballs, you know. Ah, ah, ah. You know, she says, what would you like, sir? Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, that's a hell of a thing. You lift up a girl's flunger dunger off your Manhattan glass to see the cherry still in it, you know. She says, sir, I'm asking, what would you like? Oh, oh uh, give me a piece of beer. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, uh, get, give me a shot of boobs. Ah, uh, an angel's tear. Ah, what the hell? We're talking about these toppers, and they got them, boy. One of those girls had the nerve to say to walk into a church exposed like that, and the priest says, you can't walk in there exposed like that. He says, I can't, too. I have a divine right. He says, I think you have a heavenly left, but you can't walk in here like that. You know. <laughs> Which is not saying against anybody's religion. Oh, I pick on everybody. I pick on the Jewish religion. If I pick on the Catholic religion, same thing, which is a marvelous religion. Let's face it, who's progressing the most? The Catholics, right? They're changing more rules, and that's rough for a church like that has been steeped with tradition. Like they allow meat on Friday. That's a big move for them people. The only thing they haven't changed yet is the birth control pills, which is coming about. Of course, let's face it, there's a lot of Catholic women taking birth control pills. For their rheumatism, of course. <laughs> And I don't blame him. Who the hell wants a pregnant elbow? You know. <laughs> you know, maybe the poor girl gives birth to a thumb. You know, you don't know. And what her luck is deformed, no nail, and a half a cuticle. But this could be a thing. Not that we're talking about, I mean, you talk about everybody. I mean, you know what the heck, they were just the South. Now, the South don't dig us. You get down deep South, man, they don't dig us Yankees. Oh, I didn't think we butted our nose in too damn much. I got pulled over in Biloxi, Mississippi, and a great big Ibley cop walked over. Well, he was a Jewish cop. <laughs> well, no, I, I figured he was because he had six points on his star, you know. And uh, <laughs> he had a bagel on the string, was playing with it like a yo-yo. <laughs> He says, you damn Yankees come down here, you think you know everything. You try to push us southern folks around, you think you're smart, buddy, well, I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm going to give you a ticket, smart Yankee boy with your college degrees. And he grabs his book of tickets and he handed it to me. He says, now you write what I tell you. <laughs> Nudist camps often uh, often advertise that they offer the three R's. Now, two of the three R's are rest and relaxation. What is the third R of the nudist camps? Uh, ready, well. <laughs> it all started with a dream. A flight of fancy, if you will. Montgomery Drake would look to the heavens, and there he would gaze upon the effortless flight of waterfowl. With grace and beauty, these coots would ascend to the heavens. Most of them, anyway. Encouraged by hope and funded by the family nest egg, Montgomery Drake's dream would soon be dashed by an overzealous hunter. What the? Hey, I thought that was a rabbit. Oh, no. But that was later. First, he would find the egg that laid the golden goose. At Goose Air, we continue to hatch Montgomery Drake's original dream. With more flights south every fall, and back up north every spring than any other major airline. Please allow four to six weeks per flight. Goose Air leads the flock. For your next flight, take a gander at Goose. Call your travel agent today and get your Goose booked. Ask about our discount group rate buckshot flight and Goose seat sale. If Montgomery Drake were alive today, he'd be very old. Goose Air. <laughs> That's what we used to have to have with my bedroom. Isn't that great? Yeah, I can make them look good. <laughs> oh, it's, it's great, isn't it? It's something. Okay, we're here with the one and only, <laughs> Mr. Only, Scott Rosma. <laughs> Such as it is. <laughs> Morning, Scott. I think we should talk in the Superman, like the superhero voice. You know, you ought to you'd be real surprised. This is the entire theme of the show that was never played on the air. Oh, you'd really? Be surprised at the guitar riff in the middle of this. Oh, so, oh, so we got we got to wait for the guitar riff. Oh, it rocks. Yeah, it rocks. <laughs>
It does. This, this, com this comic song rocks. Some heavy duty uh, trumpets and everything going in there. Oh, here we go. Oh, crank it, baby. Hey, yeah, great. Oh, we're rocking today, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Okay. Wonder Woman would be jamming. So, so what, this. What, 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 what one is this too? What was that too? That was the original Super Friends theme. Yep. But it's, it was the entire theme that was written by, uh, uh, what was his name? Um, Hoyt Curtin was his name. And he, <laughs> I thought you were going to say Hoyt Axton there. No, no, no. <laughs> Could have been. Yeah. You know, Hoyt Curtin was a, uh, a, a, a producer, a music producer for all of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Super Friends and Johnny Quest and Super and Space Ghost and all that. Super Freak. <laughs> super Freak, yeah. Super freak. Well, yeah, Rick James wrote a couple of comic uh, things there. Okay. Which, uh, which Batman issues were you involved in? Well, actually, I was involved in uh, some Batman coloring books and some special storybooks. You wouldn't find them in the comic book rack. Okay. So you have to find them, like, uh, through specialty outlets and stuff. After and for about four years there, I collected a tremendous amount of comic books, including Batman. So. Oh, no kidding. Hey, yeah. Scott, you know, for people who don't know, how did you get started in all this stuff? Anyway, when did you get started? Oh, uh, Well, I professionally started around 1989 or so. So it's been almost 10 years, but I've been doing comics all my life. And I decided around late 80s or so, I was getting tired of having all the professional comics pass me by. So I said, well, enough of this. I'm going to get into it, so... I just submitted some samples to big companies and went to conventions, and eventually they looked at me and said, okay, listen, if we give you a job, would you just leave us alone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll give you a ride. Right. stays off. Yeah. But so it's something actually... something that you had a natural ability for growing up and so forth? Yeah, I, I, always, I always seem to be drawing. I mean, uh, right around the age when kids usually kind of fade away from drawing, I was getting even more crazy with it. I mean, just crayons and markers and on the walls and on the floors. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Just never stopped and just evolved into a lifetime. Flashback. Now, you know, most people when they when they think of comics, they think of the the character itself. But I mean, as far as just the some of the detailed background scenes that you draw in the in the comic uh, comic books and stuff, it just it amazes me because you got to get the you got to be pretty much an engineer to get the the actual uh, well, curves I've right. And I've always contended anybody who can draw a comic book halfway decent has got to be one of the best kinds of artists. Now that doesn't mean me necessarily, but anybody who can draw. A story involving characters, which means lots of expressions on faces and backgrounds that are correct looking, buildings in perspective, and cars mm -hmm. that look like cars. And it, it takes a lot. I mean, you have to literally know how to draw everything because you never know what you're going to end up drawing. Like, yeah. who knows? Uh, Greg might even appear in a comic I'm going to do sometime. And I got to make sure I can draw him correctly. Right. He's already got a big enough head. <laughs> uh, oh, ooh, ooh. Hey, Scott, uh, for a second, let's yeah. talk about uh, uh, comic illustration as an art form. And for th those of you who did not see Scott's exhibit at the Muskegon Museum of Art, it was truly oh. impressive. When is your next one? That was all about. Rocks. Rocks. Yeah. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Uh, but, yeah, that, that, that went over incredible. I mean, they, they had uh, the museum had a great turnout for it. And well, they held it over, didn't they? No, yeah. actually, they but they did they did plan for it to run two months, which is usually a month longer than most exhibits of right, that kind. Okay. So that was that was really impressive for me. I mean, I just it blew me away. But everybody seemed to enjoy it <clears throat> quite a bit. So I was, uh, as a matter of fact, that's also something else I have here too. The uh, I have some free giveaways of the uh, poster that advertised that very show. Oh, really? From last year. Okay. Well, I want you to autograph oh. one of those for me, and I'd like it personalized. <laughs> <laughs> but keep it clean, you know. Well, I family friend. Family friend. Yeah. That'll <laughs> be extra, Bill. That'll be extra. <laughs> I, I have a question. What do you think about Late Night Space Ghost? Okay. Space Ghost Coast to Coast? Yeah, Coast to Coast. Goofy. Goofy is all get out. Is it? I, I don't mind it. It's great that the, it gets the Space Ghost character out there in front of people. I mean, kids nowadays uh who who never even seen the original space goes right. to and you know love the character and know all about him uh -huh. but it's not the classic adventure show that i love okay and that's what i'm involved in now okay. that's the well, secret well, scott, special project i've been hinting at here oh okay scott, what do you think uh -huh. about south park south park. you know i've heard all about that i've never seen the darn that's thing. because we don't get it i'm a skating cable yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, i'd love uh, to see it last week was yeah. hilarious but anyway those little characters look like little buttons or something. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not, a, not a drawing thing, that's for sure. It's all oh computerized. Oh, my God, they killed Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Again, yeah. Kenny I think I got, la last Except week, last week you got Christmas Last week you got killed three times, I think, what it was. But anyway. Uh, Kenny's got a hard life for a third grader. <laughs> but now, what, what about that as far as some of those comics? I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, because the, these things are just drawn by, I mean, I could draw these characters, you know. Oh, well, like South Park and stuff? Yeah. Well, I, I just, it's, it's fascinating that, that somebody can take something that simple and make it go. I, that's really all part of marketing, though, really. Right. 
Uh, what? What's going on? What's going on out there? No, I just like that comment. Something so simple and making. Well, if you've seen South Park, it is. Oh yeah, very, very yeah. simple, very yeah, rudimentary. Yeah, well, Beavis and Butthead. I mean, that was a big, yeah. big well, success, and that was very Beavis simple. Beavis and Butthead yeah. looked yeah. genteel. Yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> 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 Now, as, as far as the, oh, but when, when people look at your art, though, I mean, as far as the the detail, it just it's it's in the comic books. It's just it's amazing. Well, that, that's the thing is that when you have something as uh, when you get the, the huge difference between something like say as detailed as like X Men, like what I did, and something as simple as South Park, that's just a reflection of a kind of variety. Of people. Like. I mean, that's what. Now, does that upset you oh, at, at all? As far Chief as your claws, Greg. <laughs> does that upset you at all? I mean, because when you work so hard on a project to make make the artwork look so real and so good, and then Something like South Park can, can do so well. I mean, you know, is that is Green that offending? with envy. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> it's too it's much. Now, the, the one thing you noticed about the spam yeah. is, is that it, it it gives very little grease. Because yeah, I've got I'm butter really here if you want to put a little butter in the Where, bottom oh, of the pan. Oh, I should have done it. You know, I didn't even think of... Yeah, I, I just assumed it would be really fatty, and it's yeah. sticking to the pan. It's not yeah. really as fat as you as I expected it. Okay, we got... We've got tomatoes for it, cheese, two kinds of cheese, some onions. We should really, like, I, I probably should cut those onions up those, and we'll turn the news and <laughs> we'll fry those onions in there to yeah. give that, that spammy Maybe taste. But but um, we're talking with uh, Hilly here. Okay, Hilly, you say you have your favorite spam recipe? Yeah, there's two of them. I like it fried in brown sugar. Oh, that's a, a great idea. Uh -huh. And another way I like to fix it is cube it with cheese. You grill the spam and the cheese and put it on a hamburger bun and put it under the broiler and when the cheese melts, it's really good. It is? Mm hmm So the cheese is what really gives it that bonus flavor, no, right? Oh, well, yeah, but the <laughs> spam is good, just spam. Okay. And spam, spam. You, got, you probably got the spam song at home, don't you? No, I don't. Well, well this is for you, Hilly. Okay. <laughs> Hi, uh, I want to ask you something, and uh, I, I don't mean to be prying or anything, but since you're in the spotlight there every day, that, that makes you a public figure, so I think eventually someone's going to find this out anyway. So are you a, are you anything or anything? You know, like, are you a murderer or a, an embezzler or are you cheating on anybody or maybe you didn't pay your taxes or, or, or there's a body hidden in your bedroom or, or you burned down a school or uh, starred in a porno video or something? Because, see, like I said, people are going to find this out eventually anyway, so why not fess up now? I'll write a script for a movie of the week or something, and let's get some something big out of this, you know? I mean, come on, you gotta let it go, you know? You gotta, it's gonna come out, someone's gonna find it, it's gonna hurt a little at first, maybe you'll lose your job, but you can always, you know, run for mayor or go to Hollywood and get an agent or something, so, so, so what did you do? Come on, are, are you a spy? You, you got a fake diploma on your office wall? You, you're selling illegal arms to the enemy? Come on, I know you did something, and I'm, I'm gonna find it. You pull the tab off your mattress, right? You, you copied a video. Now, you, you must have done something like that. You, you pumped gas and drove away without paying. You, you didn't pay back your student loan. You, you, you jaywalked. You inhaled. You, uh, you, you littered. Jeez, you live a boring life. It's like the standing joke when they come here. They always well, somebody has to mine is Tennessee. I honestly okay. have land oh. down in Tennessee. <laughs> but it, it, it's in the south. Okay. It's always in the south. It's always in the south. They always well, say anybody here from the south, and, and nobody will say anything. And we come say, back up here. Yeah. People have teeth and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, <laughs> I knew right. it. See, I knew it. I knew it. Everybody has a joke. I mean, you know. I I've got I have land down there, and honestly, the people are wonderful. Yeah, yeah they're beautiful people. Uh, but in the Smokies, you know, they've been in the Smokies for a long time and they are pretty amazed by and I'm a city boy and I get out there honestly this happened the first time I met my neighbor he had a piece of straw in his mouth you know every stereotype you can think of of a, of a hillbilly yeah. Yeah. and I'm hanging on to this tree with a limb on it and a vine and I'm hanging on to this and he said where are you from and I said Michigan he said you got poison ivy up there in Michigan do you <laughs> I said yeah you ever get it I went mm -hmm. no how about poison oak? You ever get that? And I went, uh, no. You allergic to it? I said, I don't know. Well, I hope not, because you're hanging on to it. <laughs> you know, 15 nice minutes neighbor. to tell me, don't hang on to that vine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why we do jokes about Southern. <laughs> okay. So, Just to, like, pay him back. Yeah. yeah. From Tennessee. yeah. I'm going down there next month. And it, and it is different being, you know, doing shows down there. Yeah. 
there's a difference. So, does so that mean you like lose half your material, don't you? Or do you say the people from Michigan? I was just in Michigan, and yeah, you change it around regionally, but boy, uh, a lot of the things that go over up here don't go over down there. Yeah, yeah, I can um, imagine. Yeah, and that's pretty weird. And then, and then you get labeled. I mean, I've had them yell out, "Yeah, hey, it's a Yankee." You know, that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it's another Yankee. They think you're going to talk about cabs in New York. You know? I snorted cocaine for about 15 years. I must have snorted up Peru. I could have bought Peru all day. I snorted. Could have just gave him the money up front and had me a piece of property. I started off snorting little tiny pinches. Said, I know I ain't going to get hooked. I don't know coke. You can't get hooked. My friends have been snorting 15 years. They ain't hooked. <laughs> I started snorting little teeny. Didn't even make noise. Coke etiquette, Jack. Pass the album, please. No more for me. Six months later. <laughs> Licking the album, <laughs> trying to get a free Our funny mother, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice round of applause for our funny mother, Jackie Mom's baby, at the Playboy Club. Here I am. Ah, uh, you're ugly. Like, you thought. I am here. I am here. Two ladies on a streetcar. Was having a little chat when one spied a little bug on the other lady's hat. She reached over to pick it off, but very much to her dismay, oh, she was very embarrassed to hear the other woman say, "Put it back, put it back." Belong to you, so put it back. Put it back. Now be it a bug, beast, or flea, it don't belong to you, it belongs to me. And by the time that I count to three, put it back. Put it back. Do the Two men had a jewelry store, and as they do each year, one went on his vacation, while the other one stayed here. Now, the one that was here called up the one that was away and said, Man, I've got misery. Don't you know somebody broke into the store last night and sold all our jewelry? There was a moment's silence, and then sooner than it seemed, from way down in Florida, you could hear his partner scream. Put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back. I don't belong to you, so put it back, put it back. Now I trusted you alone. Now you try to bug me on the phone. Man, before I get back home, put it back, put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Sunday morning, Reverend Jones was busy fighting sin. From way back in the congregation came an awful dear. A red big burly deacon had a brother down in the aisle. And above the den of battle, you could hear that deacon growl. Put it back. Put it back. Go ahead now, put it back. Put it back. I don't belong to you, so put it back. Put it back. Now, when I'm passing that plate about, I want you to put something in. Don't you take nothing out. <laughs> and before I push you in your mouth, put it back. Put it back. Now, why not put it back? Man. Drop that money, you thieving rascal. <laughs> we used to have a spam carving contest, but uh, we've gotten out of that. We do have a, uh, an event every year called Spam Jam here in Austin that's uh, yeah. built around uh, spam, but 
But our attitude is is that uh, spam uh, sculpting contests really take away from the, the exact purpose of that product, which yeah. is to enjoy yeah, besides the, that, you the got, food. Besides that, you got a spam race car. I mean, why, why would you want to, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. You right. need to carve it when you've got now, a race Now, with car their going. first really big contribution to mankind since the Swiss Army knife, comes the all-new Swiss Army Remote Control. It's more than just a TV remote. It's also a garage door opener. It turns on lights and appliances when you slap it. And, of course, it's a can opener. But wait, that's not all. There's more. The Swiss Army Remote Control will also massage your neck, start your car, freshen your breath, and shave your beard. It's a cellular phone, a travel alarm, a pocket calculator, a flashlight, a stun gun, a stapler, and a portable PA. Your attention, please. The Swiss Army Remote Control. You'll never have to leave the couch again. Available now wherever beer is sold. Those fangable things. <laughs> well, you called me during my break, luckily. Oh, okay, oh. good, good. You're, you were uh, doing my, what? My day job. Your day job, Yeah, okay. well, they, I, I like to think of myself as a motivational speaker, but technically the uh, the official title is uh, disgruntled postal employee. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, so what what is your claim to fame? Two. Oh, yeah. You stumped me on that Whoa. one. Yeah. Oh gosh, I don't know. We can I, talk about climax. I was again, on if you like. the improv. <laughs> oh really? That's kind of neat. neat yeah, not really. Yeah, yeah, I got the hug bud. Hug bud. Yep, Bud Friedman. Oh, okay, all, all right, all right. Have to uh, hug bud about? when they get off stage. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about no, that. No, that's not a euphemism. I actually got the hug bud. And did you enjoy it? <laughs> well, certainly. Okay, Who just wouldn't? check it. Just check it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that you also uh, appear over. I'm sorry. You also appear over at Chaplin's too. That's a, that's kind of a cool place. Yeah, yeah. I work over at Chaplin. I work all over the country actually. I've been in like 47 states and three countries, and and of course Georgia. And <laughs> of course, of course. What what are you known for in your in your uh, your routine? Condoms. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> I like to hand out lots and lots of condoms. <laughs> yeah. So well, bring the kids. You're a responsible so, guy. The family well, that's, oriented. That's what I'm there for. Is to, <laughs> A postman who hand, uh, hands out condom. That's a responsible... That's right. Don't forget disgruntled. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, this is... It's too early Maybe for I this. Reload, it really is too, a second. It's really too early for this. It is quite early. Yeah. Anyway. Well, this is like the middle of the night for me. Okay. Well, that's true. It will be for you. <laughs> what yeah. did you say you had to do? Reload. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that oh, you're reloading. <laughs> <laughs> took us a while to get that low. one, but... Uh, yeah, it's my break. I have to reload during the break. Do you have any any any, any famous routines that you do? Uh, <laughs> do you like you just want to like rattle off something? Well, that's or? one. There's one of Steve Martin that used to do that I'd like to repeat for you. Okay. You, you wanted a famous routine, not one of mine. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, what are your famous routines? I, uh, I, honey, do I have any famous routines? Uh, um, ones the ones that make Georgia people laugh. Oh, oh man, usually just shiny objects. <laughs> shiny objects. <laughs> You know, I was I was in Atlanta and uh, I was doing I was seriously about like a month ago I was in Atlanta and this woman came up to me after the show and and uh, she was with a couple other people and she said you know we enjoyed you and I said well well you know we're all in Georgia so you know, I thought that was kind of odd yeah, okay. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. okay thank you yeah. there you go you can Hello. hear more things like that at the Muskegon Club <laughs> in Manhattan tonight <laughs> there yeah. you go now they're happy uh, yeah. I'm sure it's going to be packed now that's not one of my jokes that's, oh, okay. that's the opening act joke I see I oh okay that. well yeah okay that's just, this is it. <laughs> who is the opening act too by the way Jimmy no, I haven't actually worked with him yet oh. <laughs> <laughs> you heard for really, all I know but he's really good isn't he evidently yeah, Have yeah. You ever oh, had he it? wouldn't be there in Muskegon would he that's right of course I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of a thing. You go to New York, you go to Chicago, you come to Muskegon. That's right. That's right. And you open for Mark Boyd. There you go. Who? Who? Yeah. Who's he? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask me about my baby. Oh. Yeah? What about your baby? <laughs> <laughs> That's his day job. <laughs> no, we just we just had a baby four months ago, my wife. Oh, and, yeah, brand I'm new. pretty proud. Just okay. as proud as a man can be without actually being the father. I am. Oh, there that's you go. good. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, she come with a father. That with explains some, why you're disgruntled. Uh. <laughs> she come with a father with some guy that she used to date way before we got married, which means she's been pregnant for eight and a half years. Oh, this is good. There you go. Isn't that odd? Condoms will do that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was busy on the road handing them out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been the sperm yeah, bank. Unfortunately, you didn't hand them to the right guy. Yes, evidently. Yeah, yeah there you go. To my shroom. Uh, well, what's your baby's name? Jessica. Aw. He had to name. say it just like that. Well, how, how about if you put her on the phone? <laughs> did, you, did, you, did, you, did you name her after Jessica Lang? 
Um, is she yeah, gonna, yeah, is she gonna win an Oscar? Yeah, that's right. Is she gonna win an Oscar? I'm too old, so maybe you can ask one of those other ones. So. Morning. The one and only Paul Lynn. The one and only right, Mr. <laughs> only. True or false? Some airlines now give you a thorough frisking before permitting you to board the plane. Well, that's the only reason I fly. 